Doorbell rang this morning. Who's this? I'm not expecting any shipments. Run down. Oh, and what, to my surprise, is something that I've been waiting for all year. I am super excited to finally get my hands, bam, on the new 7200 RF. I've been using the EOS R exclusively almost for like, I would say the better part of the last year now for all my photos, all my vlogs, all of those everyday tasks, I use the EOS R and I usually have the 15 to 35 on it. I only really keep two lenses with me. I've been using the 85. Now, 7200 is one of my favorite lenses. I've been calling it the magic lens since before I got a job at the camera shop. It was my favorite go-to lens for weddings, for events, for portraits, for pretty much anything, even B-roll. And the biggest drawback was always how big it was. The 7200 classically is a monster lens. This thing is super heavy. When you have that on the end of your camera, uh, that is no joke. It's a pretty long lens. There are very few backpacks and camera bags and rolling bags where this fits nicely without taking up a huge amount of real estate. Now, obviously you take the hood off and it, it shrinks in size notably. I have not personally unboxed this yet. This is my first look, my first impressions, and then I'll probably come back in a few months after some extensive testing because I don't want to make a video telling you to go buy it if it's garbage. So I, I need to find that out, but I wanted to make this to just kind of, I'm excited. I'm super excited, no more talking. Here we go. Oh, look at it. What a stubby little thing. <laughs> it's, it's so cute. It's like a little pet you just want to take care of. Look at that size difference. That is remarkable. Ooh, the hood's white. What's that for? If that's a hole for a variable ND with the lens hood on, I'd be so psyched. It's not. What is this hole for? How do I not know what this is? Hang on, I know someone who might know what this is. So. I have a question for you. Um, I'm making a video right now about the new 7200 lens. You were the only person I would know that would know what this is. What is this hole in the hood for? Well, do you, know, you ever use a circular polarizer filter? Maybe add one made with your name on it? I was just saying, if that's a hole for like a, an ND or a polarizer, I will be psyched because I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. I just shot football with that the other day. This what did you think? New one. Oh, I mean, the lens is sharp. I don't like that you have to turn it further than you have to turn the 70 to 200 version three. Mm. To zoom. It's a longer throw than you would have to do with the, the other one. So that just takes an extra twist to right. get all the way out. Slows you down a little in the moment. Thanks, dude. Later. <laughs> Bye. Called it. There's your comparison. This one is definitely wider than this, but as far as size goes, you can see uh, quite a big difference. The tripod collar on this, way sturdier. It just feels like everything's just a little more refined. Obviously, these lenses have been around and have not been updated for a long time as far as the physical outward appearance. Optically, they've been updated, but when it comes to things like the tripod collar, the lens hood, uh, all this stuff seems new and up to date with what you would expect in 2019. That's easy. You don't have to have that if you don't want. You could just go with this. Now, weight-wise, too, I was gonna bring a scale. Kirk told me to bring a scale, and I totally forgot. It, it feels lighter. I don't think that's gonna help anyone, but again, first looks, it feels lighter than the old one, which is a plus. When you're carrying around tons of glass and metal in your bag, you want lighter stuff, so that's part of the reason I like mirrorless, because they're lighter, they're smaller. The footprint in my bag, I just don't wanna be carrying and lugging around the world on my back. Any bit of like weight that's shredded off, thanks. Now, Canon has been uh, pretty excited about their new control ring. So if you did want to have your aperture set for this or your ISO or whatever, you can control that right here. Personally, I have not used the control ring for anything yet. It's, uh, I've never really found that I needed it. All right, so let's take a look at the zoom feature going from 72 to 200. As Jared said, he says it takes a little bit longer. Unlock that. Whoa. Telescoped out to 200, you're looking at pretty much the exact same size. Yeah, so there's definitely a way shorter throw, as he mentioned, 
from 70 to 200 on the version three. It's a way shorter thrill right there and it's internal zoom, so I like that, but that's also why this lens is so big. It doesn't move because all of those things are happening inside the barrel, whereas with the new 7200, all of those things are happening on the outside. So you are getting that length back, but at least storing it in your bag and on the table when it's on your camera, it's a bit smaller. So it's still a win for me. The amount of distance you have to go extra for the 7200 is like a quarter, I would say. Maybe like an extra quarter turn. Maybe it slows you down a little in the moment. That extra quick little snap could be the, you know, the motion blur you didn't want in a photo, but you're never gonna know until you get out there and actually do that. Stabilizer mode, one and two. Same thing as the Mark III. And there it is. Oh man, like a shiny new fresh element is always just such a pleasure to look at. Oh, just wanna eat it. Okay, so this is typically what you would, uh, what it would look like with the 7200 with the adapter on the EOS R. So you can see uh, fairly long and it's, uh, it's heavy. It's very, very heavy. And then you look at the size difference, considerably lighter, I feel, and just a lot more manageable. When you're looking at them both side by side, I mean, to have a 7200 this size, this footprint is amazing. The 70 to 200 has always been one of those grail lenses. No matter what brand that you're using, if you're shooting Nikon or Sony or Canon, it's just always one of those focal lengths that you want to eventually invest in because it's good at so many things and they're usually super sharp. The RF lenses are incredibly sharp. The glass is so, so good. So to have that caliber, that kind of power in your bag at that size already is a huge win to me. Now, this lens comes in at a whopping $26.99 US dollars. So it is no joke. Unless you're making money professionally, that, that's a lot of money to drop on a lens. Now, it, their argument, and I agree with this, is it's better to invest in the lenses than the body because the lenses will stay with you, and especially these brand new RF lenses, hopefully throughout the years should you maintain on the same system. So where the bodies go out of date more and faster than a lens, the lens is gonna hang around a lot longer, so that investment makes more sense. The Mark III 7200, the EF right here, is coming in at $20.99 right now, so uh, that's a big difference. That's, uh, you know, uh, you can do a lot in that range, so it's up to you. Are you a professional? Are you a hobbyist? One of the things Canon are really excited about and, and everyone's excited about with regards to these new RF lenses and now finally having mirrorless cameras is because the mirror's gone, the element, the back glass element in these RF lenses is way closer to the back. So when the lens is affixed to the camera body, this part, this glass is, is way closer to the sensor. And what that does for you is it gives you a, a sharper image, especially edge to edge. So that is a massive benefit of using a mirrorless camera with a lens that that's designed like this over using an EF lens with their mount on the mirrorless camera. So this should just perform better through and through. I still wanna do tests. I'm gonna come back and do an extensive review going over sharpness and, and we're gonna compare it to the 7200 Mark III and see if it really is worth that extra money or is it worth $26.99? For those of you that are already using a Mark III 7200 and you haven't been using it because of the size or the, the real estate or the, the heft to the lens, uh, you probably already know the value and you probably already want this. You've probably already ordered this. Are you already using a 7200? Are you using the F4 version, the F2.8? Is this a lens that you would think about buying or is it just too much money for you? Let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear your thoughts. But this right here, is one of the items that I'm excited about most in 2019 with regards to photography. Guys, that's it for me. Hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Very heavy. If someone broke into my house, would you get a knife? Would you get a pistol? Pistol, it says <laughs> pistol. Guys, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button if you liked it. Ooh, like a water pistol, because we're in Canada. Now, I would grab the 7200 and I would just bludgeon someone. Guys, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe. I did that backwards. Hit the like button. Oh, yeah. Guys, that's it for me. It's a horrible word. Bludgeon? It just sounds dirty, doesn't it? Bludgeon someone? What's wrong with you, man? I probably just creeped out like 100,000 people easily. I'm sorry. It's a heavy lens.